Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Today we're going to do yet another unboxing video and I'm going to dedicate this video to Steve the Model Car Minion. So get a good cup of whatever you like to drink and get it in your nice Minion cup because we're going to go down and take a look at the Revell Jeep Rubicon. Now the reason why I am uh, shouting out the model car Minion is because he has just recently built one of these kits. So I'm going to unbox my version of the kit. And if you want to see his build, check out his channel. I'll leave a link in the description below. It's a real good one. You'll like the colors. All right, now let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box and have a little bit of Minion Banana Ale. Introduced in 2003, the Jeep Rambler Rubicon was a fully luxurious off-road vehicle. Here Ravel has made this awesome 125th scale plastic model kit for ages 12 and up. It's a skill level 4. Now uh, Ravel is using a 5 level skill set for these model kits. So this one being 4, it's as close to a 5 as you can get. So a lot of detail and new parts as it says on the front of the box. The side of the box highlights the different views of our Jeep Rambler Rubicon. Here you can see the front three-quarter and the rear three-quarter shot. And then we have more details of the undercarriage and the engine, as well as the front fog lamps and the rear spare tire in the back, as well as some of the checkerboard plate. Again, a really cool looking model and a lot of fun. On this side of the box, we get the features. So the length of this model kit is 6.25 inches. You have 92 parts inside. It is molded in white and the decals are water slide. And over here we have the Ravel paint colors, which of course you can also find for testers. The basic colors are aluminum, blue, flat black, dark flat gray, gold, semi-gloss black, silver, steel, transparent red and turn signal amber. This model kit was made in 2020 by Ravel. So what's inside the Jeep Rambler Rubicon? Well, let's remove the lid here and take a look. So there it is. What we have is confronted with a nice set of clear plastic. It does appear that my light is acting up. So we'll just move this down. Okay, then we have a bag of the white plastic parts and there are quite a few interesting looking things at first glance. You can see those really cool looking fender flares, which will be glued onto our car, our Jeep. And then we have the off-road tires right here. Again, really cool. You get five of them, one for the back. Then we have our little Jeep body and boy, this is pretty tiny. Now, the uh, Jeep Wranglers, they originally came out back in the 80s by American Motors. I think it's 1986 is what I was reading. So these are just extensions of the, that body style. Pardon me. Now I'm just going to put the box lid somewhere off screen. Okay, there we go. One thing I noticed right in here is the bag contains some little spring coils which will go in the suspension, I do believe, but we will find out as we go along here. Next up, we have the bag containing the chassis and the engine. Again, it looks really great. Ah, there we go. Just moved my viewfinder. Now it looks like the right lighting. <laughs> looks really dark when you have it at the wrong angle. Okay, anyway, carrying on, we have just a little tiny bit of chrome, the mirrors and looks like the headlight bezels in the back and then here we have our wheels and these are very early uh, 2000s looking even into the 90s style but again really cool stuff then we have our instructions which we will look at next followed by the decal sheet and I will do the big reveal at the end of the video so stay tuned for that Next up, let's take a look at those instructions and then move on to the parts. Here we have page one of the instruction sheets for our 2003 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. 
Ah, good thing I said it was 2003 because I was right. It doesn't say on the box, but it does in the instructions. So this is a 2003 Wrangler Rubicon. And right down here, we have the write-up in the history of the Jeep. And over in these panels is the same write-up in, I do believe, French and German, because Ravel is now a Ravel Germany kind of kit. So let's take a look at our next pages. In the first few pages of this model kit, we have all the different paint color callouts and some of these symbols that we will see as we are building the kit, like repeat two times, four times, uh, repeat procedure, and those kind of different symbols. And as you read the instructions, we will find these and basically go through them. Ravel is pretty good in giving us a full out chart of all the part names and the numbers so that we can find them. And if uh, any of them are missing, you can always contact Ravel and get some replacements. Getting into the instructions, we have a little help from our minion friend. This is our model car minion. And he is saying that here is the frame and you're gonna paint all this cool stuff up. So you have to go through the color charts from where you see these uh, letters in the square boxes. They refer to the paint chart. So there's all the paint colors. And here we also have the exhaust pipe being glued in on the side of the engine. So this is all a one piece, so that makes it nice and simple. Here we have the two piece transfer case, the front and the back, and that will drop into the frame right here behind the transmission. Here we have our first symbol, which is the broken double arrow, and that stands for remove and throw away. And what we're looking at are these little cylinders that are molded in underneath the springs. And there are some here as well as on the front of the drive shaft. And you would remove these with your Xeron cutters and then throw that little bit away and file the ends and clean it up so that they all fit in. So this has a lot of what looks like snap construction. Remember those springs I showed? Well, these are going up into these tubes underneath the front and rear axles, which then mount in here. And it's also a screw together kit. These are the screws. So they would be going into those tubes to hold it all in. And then this is the clicking in portion, which appears to be at the ends of where the springs are. Or actually not the springs, the uh, arms, the trailing arms. So here it says metal screw long, springs, and uh, repeat this four times. And they're bringing your attention to this step. Step five shows the wheel being inserted into the tire. And these are nice one piece wheels, so there is no backing plates to them. Very easy to assemble. You will have to paint them in the G color and repeat this step five times. And there is no glue needed in this step. Next up, we have these metal axles that we would put into the back of the wheels and then slide them in through our axles for the Jeep. Step seven shows the front and the back of the seats being glued together. Same as step eight, but this is for the rear seat. Step nine is showing our interior pieces all coming together. So here we have the interior pan, which also includes the fender skirts, the inner fender skirts. And here we have our completed seats being put down, two for the front and our bench seat going into the back, as well as the gear shift lever and our parking brake, which all go into the center console. Panels 10 and 11 show different elements of the interior. Here we have the bulkhead, which is being glued into the front of the splash aprons, as well as our side panels. And these slot together really nicely, again, for a sort of a snap finish. You can see that this L-shaped bracket goes into these grooves down here and the whole side panels mount in onto the floor. Over here we have a multi-piece dashboard. You can see the nice pedals molded down below. There is a decal as shown by this symbol, another water slide one, and it looks like it would go into the instrument panel, which saves you trying to dry brush paint the little gauges on there. If there are any, we'll take a look in the parts later. Here we have a grip uh, this is like a grab handle which glues onto the dashboard, probably for when you're going over a lot of rocks out in your outdoor wilderness adventure and your passenger needs something desperately to hold on to. There's the handle. Here we have the console for our steering wheel, which is right here. 
And there's a decal with the letters Jeep, which will go right in the center. Panel 12 shows our dashboard being installed into the interior. And here you can see some little tabs sticking out, which would go into these slots, allowing the dashboard to click nicely in place. Step 13, again, we've got some remove and throw away sections here. Again, for these little circular uh, barrels that are sticking out. Now what we have here is the roll cage. And we also have the top, which seems to include uh, well, it looks like sun visors, but looking in step 14, they're actually something in the back here. So I'm not exactly sure what that is. However, this whole roll bar assembly goes in with these bars at the back here behind the front seats and this bar clicking into the back little trunk area of our Jeep. Panel 15 shows our interior assembly being dropped down onto the chassis. And panel 16 is where the front of the grille starts to come together. So here we have this back panel and the back of our headlights, as well as the front of our headlights and what appears to be a bit of the grille. And you can see that there is a hole here, a hole here, and a pin there. And then a pin on these and a hole and a hole down here. So these would all go into those little holes and lock into place nicely. Panel 17 includes step 16, which is the grill panel that we made up, and this drops into the body right here. So it sort of appears that the headlights need to come in here and go into these holes. So you might have to try to tilt this a little bit forward in order for that to happen, and then lean it back. And this U-shaped piece fits onto this little pin down here. And then for our windshield, you can see these tabs that come out with the holes in them and your windshield will drop in into the windshield frame and be held under the hood by these little tiny pins. Now, it appears to me that this model kit does not have an engine because otherwise there would be a big step of us putting in the firewall, master cylinder and all that and building up an engine, but it's not there. So instead, what we have is step one being the chassis in the interior, and then our body loops in through here. There are some little uh, holes and slots in the back of this panel, which there should be tabs at the back of this body. And the tabs go into the slots and the front drops down. And these are little screw mounts in here, so they go into those holes. And up here, we see how that roll bar comes in. So it's almost like the body goes down here and is a little bit forward. And then you push this into the frame up top, or possibly the other way around is to have the body slip back. But at either rate, these bits of the roll bar have to go in right into the windshield in those corners. Step 19 shows our completed chassis being screwed together at the front right here and here with some metal screws, so you do not need any glue in that area. And then down below in step 20, and just slide this up a little tiny bit, what we have is the front crossover bar, and we have our rear view mirror going into this hole, and then the bar will drop in. And there's some tiny pins there and there, not the ones up top, but there and there. And they go into these holes right here and here, which basically are the sun visors from the windshield frame. Panel 21 shows a two-piece snorkel, which goes up on the side and mounts into the windshield frame. And then we have the two-piece side mirror being glued into this little hole right there. Now sliding the instructions up to panels 22, right there, we have the hood hold downs being glued in place. There should have actually been one on this side, but they didn't print it. And then down below, it looks like a step rail. Again, repeat for panel 21 and the two piece mirror going in here. Panel 23 shows our side fender flares being put into place. And it does have the little circle with the repeat on it. Oh, which I also see is in the step 22s for the right and left hand side of those hood hinges and the little rocker trim. Okay, so it was there. 
yeah, so these have the long pins which go into these holes around each of the wheel arches. And that again makes this nice and simple. Panel 24 shows what we are doing into the back of the Jeep. Here you can see that text plate with the Jeep logo on the back. Really cool stuff. We have what looks like our rear taillight lenses, which are going into these holes. And it does say to paint them I, which is transparent red. And then here we have our license plate shroud, which goes into the holes here. And our rear bumper, which goes onto these posts, as well as the exhaust tip. And right over here we have our gas filler cap, which goes into this hole. Step 25 shows us placing on the Jeep decal. And then we also have the spare tire mount with the third brake light. And this goes, well, what looks like right over top of the Jeep lettering. So again, some really cool stuff. Not exactly sure how this looks, so maybe on the box it will show us a little bit better in detail where this goes. Oh, actually it says centered over the letters EE. -E. So that's how it is there, right where our minion is. A Steve, our model car minion. <laughs> now, right here we have this little Jeep bar, and this goes into this area here. And then our bumper is being attached to the front, and we have these lenses for the fog lights, as well as the front license plate, which goes into those holes there. Then we wrap up the model with our windshield wiper blades, and they will come down in here. And we also have our turn signals, and these would be painted with some amber. And then we have our door handles being glued onto the side of the car. So this Jeep has a lot of really cool little details, but still has a almost semi-quasi snap-together feel to it. So it makes it really easy to assemble the kit, but gives you enough detail to really decorate it out. Our final panel is the decal application. And here you can see a lot of cool things, like the Rubicon right across the front windshield. And then down here we have some license plates, as well as a bunch of bumper stickers. And then our Rubicon decal here, and a few going on here, as well as this Jeep logo. So again, it makes it nice and simple to decorate it as the factory stock version of the Jeep Rubicon. Here we have some really cool options in our decals. You can also build this as a beach lifeguard Jeep with the lifeguard decal across the windshield. We also have our red cross going onto the hood and the beach patrol decal with the red cross as well as the medical symbol and the lifeguard decal and our previous Jeep decal as well as this one up here on the fenders. So again, you can build this for a diorama and make it really cool with a nice beach scene. Now I just want to break this video for a minute and remind you that in my video catalog I have an unboxing of the Dukes of Hazzard's Daisy's Jeep CJ and of course this is a 1980 Jeep and what I wanted to do was compare for just a minute the body of this Jeep, the old MPC one, with the new Jeep Ram Wrangler Rubicon kit from Ravel, just for a little size comparison for a second. So bear with me. On the top we have Daisy's Jeep from 1980, and down below we have our 2003 Jeep Rambler Rubicon. And you can see that the Rubicon is longer, and that is because there is more room in the back. Actually, if I slip this back a little bit, you can see that the engine bay area is approximately the same. Actually, I think it's a little bit longer, a little further back here, because I do believe the firewall would go right there. So overall, our newer Jeep is a bit bigger, like most of the upgraded vintage cars of today are, a little bit longer. So now let's examine the one we actually came here for and see how it stacks up. So I'll just zoom the camera in. All right. Here we go. So what do we got? We've got a lot of cool detail on the enclosed hood. And if I turn it on the side, you can see all the little holes where all the uh, parts with the mounting pins would end up going. The front looks really nice. You can see that infamous Jeep grille, much like on Daisy's Jeep. 
Now the uh, front of Daisy's Jeep, of course, is separate. It's a more uh, detailed parts-oriented type of kit, the old one. But still, this one is quite nice. It's got the great hinges on there. And then in the back, it's got that texture plate with Jeep stamped into it, as well as the hinges molded in place. So again, really excellent detail on here, and it will be quite a joy to put this body together. Next up, we have our chassis pan, and you can see some mold marks where the seats are. But luckily for us, the seats will cover those, so you won't have to remove those with your hobby blade which is always nice. And it does look like there is some stamping in here, a bit of the old trademarks, you know, and uh, that gets covered by our rear seat. There are some mold marks just behind the rear seat. So those would have to be filled in and sanded down just to be more accurate. But you know, you don't really have to do that if you are uh, just starting out and don't have any model putty. There is some mold marks here and you can scrape those down with your number 16 hobby blade. Turning the model on its back, again, you can see some nice detail in the floor panels. Nice molding in there, a real high quality kit. And like I said before, quite simple to put together. Looks like there are some mounting pins for some of the undercarriage parts. And if you take your body, this will easily go in. Now. I don't feel any of those tabs that are supposed to slot into here, but there is, you can see notches here in the wheel arches, and there is this little bit of a square peg right there, rectangular peg, and as you can see that fits in nicely right in there, so a little bit of glue, and the wheel arch uh, moldings will cover over these tabs that are sticking out this way. So very nicely engineered in order to make this model quite simple to put together. So I would highly recommend this kit just based on here, but let's look at more parts. Here we have the bag containing those four springs, as well as our metal screws and our axles. And if you notice right in here, they actually have a knurled end on them. I don't know if I can get some light into there. You can see the knurl right there. Now that knurled end will go into the plastic wheels and it will cut these little blades into the plastic wheels, which will make the plastic wheels hard to take off of the axle. So this is sort of a one of those bits where it only goes in one direction and if you make a mistake you can't back it out without wrecking the wheels. Our next parts tree is the chassis for this wonderful model kit. It almost looks like a hot rod here. Maybe you could uh, mount it on a 32 Ford or something. I don't know, just a suggestion. But there we have our engine. Looks like a straight six even. And then our transmission. There's uh, the holes for the um, axle pegs, or actual axle tubes, sorry, to fit into these holes. You also have your gas tank in here. Now you can see the parts tree goes into the frame in these points. Again, you want to use your Xeron cutters just to snip those out all the way around. And then some sandpaper and your hobby knives to get rid of the seam lines and everything. And then you can paint this up and make it look all nice. Speaking of our axles, here we have the front and the rear axles. And this one has the steering linkages all up in front, as well as the drive shaft back in here and then the rear drive shaft and our rear axle. And just as a test fit, I know this probably won't be too good because we've got the parts trees in there, but uh, overall it does seem that these go into the holes nicely. <laughs> but like I say, I can't really do it because all the parts tree uh, bits are hanging out in there. But overall this looks quite nice. Here we have two parts trees side by side and we have our windshield wiper blades. And these are really nice because they're just molded on the very ends of the part sprue. So that's an easy cleanup in those two points. Here we have our side mirror housings as well as our radiator shroud and the area for our headlights. And this actually has a textured radiator in here. So again, you can paint that flat black in the center. And there we have the hood hold downs. We also have the gas filler cap, and here we have our snorkel as well as the breather on top. Those are the door handles. And on this part's tree, we have the front bumper component, 
And this is our spare tire mount. We have our front bumper, our rear bumper, and the side panels for the rocker trim. Now I'm just going to bring this up to the camera for a minute just so you can see that nice grill detail inside. On the back it is smooth. There are some mold marks, so again you've got to get rid of these in order to make this part fit nice and flush in the body. You also have some on the inner snorkel, but again a file or some sandpaper, your number 16 hobby blade, those are all the tools you need to get rid of those mold marks. And then moving on to our bumpers, again nice detail, a bit of that texture plate in there, and uh, Really cool stuff. On the back, there's your spare tire mount with the brake light. Again, mold mark there and there, so you have to clean those out. But overall, quite nice, quite uh, well crafted. And the interlock pins are really helpful for the first time builder of a more advanced, more detailed kit. Our next parts tree highlights some of the little features of the kit. And what we have here is our exhaust system, and uh, we've got some really cool things going on there. A muffler and what appears to be a catalytic converter, as well as the pipes going up into the engine. And here we have the front and back of our transfer case. We also have our license plates in here, and our gear stick le lever, as well as our parking brake lever, which this one looks like it's actually snapped over in the parts tree, so hopefully it's going to be all right. And we also have this little bar here, and that is the front of the roll bar system. Bringing it up to the camera, you can see the wonderful detail in here. Very nicely done. The transfer case will glue together front and back. We also have this little panel right there. But again, the detail is quite nice, and this should be a fun kit to put together. Here we have our interior panels, and again, wonderful interlocks on all of these components. There we have the hook to go into that front bulkhead. We also have a notch in the rear fender arches and the open pockets here. Again, a nice detail. There's our steering wheel as well as that grip and our uh, center console, our steering column. It's our steering column. <laughs> Why am I calling it a console? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, those map pockets are open. So if you're into detail, you can print up some tiny maps off of your computer and then stuff them into these side pockets. Again, wonderful work. Some mold marks on the back, but a bit of sandpaper will take that off. Let's take a look at that steering wheel. Beautiful. Flat area, but of course you're going to put your Jeep lettering on there. Actually, it looks like it does have the raised lettering down there. I uh, don't have my reading glasses on, so I can't really fully see that. But overall, it does look quite excellent. These two parts trees showcase our seats. So here we have our left and right hand seats, as well as the rear bench seat and the seat back. Again, excellent work. Look at the upholstery patterns on there. Very beautiful stuff. And on the back, we actually have some sunken in areas which will fit nicely into the seat backs and the seat fronts so that they mate together pretty nicely. Again, wonderful stuff. Oh, I'm looking at this from the bottom. So here's these little slots and uh, on our floor pan, remember they stuck up so they would interlock into the seats to hold them down. So again, a nice press fitting and uh, very minimal glue needed. In fact, you could even put some liquid glue in there and I'm sure it would do the trick. Here we have our Jeep dashboard, and again, this is quite big because it's going to have airbags and all that sort of thing in it, whereas a Jeep like Daisy's would actually be quite narrow in the dashboard. And then we have that front bulkhead. So again, looking really good. You can see the stereo system in here and the, the uh, fresh air vents on the top as well as on the sides. Wonderful work. The instrument gauge panel here is uh, completely flat, so that'll allow the decal to sit in nicely. Mold marks in the back, but I don't think you need to remove these. Maybe not even in the bulkhead, because the hood doesn't open, and this would be mounted, you know, up against the plate like that, so no one's going to be able to see inside for those mold marks. Now, one thing I will bring out is when you glue this together, always remember to scrape 
the paint away from the glue contact surfaces on both like let's say the side of the dashboard and on the holes here in this zone just in that little circle area you want to make sure there's no paint so when you do glue this together even though this clicks in and locks a little bit of liquid glue won't hurt anything once they're locked together but you want that plastic to plastic so that the plas the two pieces of plastic weld together and there's no paint barrier in the middle which will make your parts fall off our next interior parts tree is the roll cage assembly and i know from looking at this it's very hard to tell what's going on but here you have the pipes going down and down you need to remove the barrel here and remove it from the parts tree in those areas same as on the other side looks like there's quite a bit of flash on here and flash is when the two mold pieces or two the mold is like this and they put plastic in between so imagine the parts are like that so they put plastic in that's what all the runners are for so it runs around inside the mold and gets plastic everywhere molten plastic then when the molten plastic dries they pull it out of the mold now where the flash is coming in it's this little transparent bit of plastic over the top that means that in that area the mold is not completely tight together like this it's got a bit of a gap like that so when the plastic gets squeezed through of course it oozes into the gap and that's where the flash comes in and usually there's a thick horrible seam line going along here so you want to remove that with your hobby blades on the seam lines and uh, well this area you're actually cutting off there but again you want to clean all this up so it looks like a nice tube and doesn't have a seam line running all through it on this parts tree we have our fender flares both front and rear and we also have this panel that i thought these were sun visors but it turns out they're not and now i know what these pieces are if we turn this upside down you'll see these funny little bits under here well those are speakers so this is your stereo system which is actually sitting up in the jeep up in the top you know mounted like this with these speakers pointing downward so that's pretty cool i didn't know uh, jeeps had such a setup so here's our front fenders and that's the little area where you put the decal so those are basically side marker lights again very simplistic but very nice you can see the long pins which are all going to go into the body in those holes so again makes it easy for the beginner model to put together but enough pieces for the intermediate modeler to enjoy. This parts tree contains our five wheels, as well as this little interesting piece. I think that's the tailpipe extension. I um, could be mistaken, of course. But this parts tree is interesting. It's actually a little stand. And you got three legs. It's one, two, three. So that's, that's an interesting way of uh, making a parts tree. You are, of course, going to cut the wheels off of here now if you look at the wheels they're actually bladed right across there and that is to help the wheels sit into the tire so what you want to do is make sure that these connecting points are cut off and completely sanded flat along the wheel and that's so that there's nothing sticking up when you put that tire on that's going to pop the tire off the rim like not off this way to fall off but leave it raised up in these parts let's put it there like that so your tire instead of being round around that wheel if you leave these little tabs on it's going to be like that like an oval sort of thing so you don't want it to be oval you want it to be circular so remember to uh, clip this off with your cutters very close and then with your sandpaper and file uh, file that little blade see it's right on that blade so you want to file that blade flat to match the other blades around it and that'll keep your tire looking nice and round but overall again look at that nice detail you've got a little bit of an indentation on each of the fins or the spokes and then you also have the little five bolts in here and remember when you're torquing on the wheel with your torque wrench you want to torque it there on that bolt and then go across and you're doing the star pattern no but that's on a real car you don't have to bolt these wheels on they have the holes in the back and that's where that metal axle is going to go on 
and again it will look quite nice. Once again we have this interesting stand system on our chrome parts tree, but that's really good because you don't want your chrome parts tree to be flat, because then it can scrape up against other parts trees if they're not in the bags, like they are not now. So uh, having these is really nice. Actually, I wonder, you think that peg would... Yep, interlock right into those holes. Hey, look at that. <laughs> that matches up quite perfectly. That's like Johan stuff of the 60s. That's pretty neat. Except uh, this is a little bit better than the Johan ones, because I could never figure out once you pull the Johan ones out of the box. Johan had a stacking uh, system like this, so that the parts didn't touch and scrape. But like once you took that system apart, you couldn't figure out which parts tree went back together in what order. So I could never get them back in the boxes. <laughs> anyway, there's the back of the headlights and the chrome bezels for in the front and our mirrors. Oh, and what I was going to say is, you notice that this parts tree is chromed. So that means that chrome is basically like paint. So if you want the plastic to plastic, you've got a the contact, you've got to scrape the chrome away from the areas where it's going to be glued. And with all the other parts, you notice they were molded in white plastic. That means that you have the option to either build this all as one big white plastic Jeep, or paint the parts. And you don't have to really follow their guide. If you, because um, on the box the Jeep was yellow, if you want to paint it red or something, you can always paint it. Uh, I would recommend finding the Chrysler or Jeep paint color code if you want it to be accurate to the Jeep. Or you can always opt to paint it your own colors, like maybe pink and black, for example. Uh, I'm not sure who might have done that, but um, that would be kind of cool. Or you could also paint it like a forest green or uh, pink, if you want to do Barbie kind of Jeep. That might be neat. Anyway, it's all up to you. But you can see the detail on the chrome parts tree is rather smooth, but that's what you want. Nice attachment for the mirror right on the parts tree, because basically when you're looking in the kit at the mirrors, you're looking from the top down. You never really see it from the bottom up. So when you remove this from the parts tree and clean that down, it will remove the chrome, unless you have silver paint or a Molotov chrome pen. You can't re-chrome plate that, but in its location, being underneath, you're not going to see it. So that's a really good location for, you know, the design of the parts tree. So overall, there's your chrome, four pieces, five pieces, pardon me, but it does look good. Here we have our clear parts tree. And one thing I will say about the clear parts is if you're using any of the glues, on your uh, clear windows, be very careful and use it very sparingly in the attachment points, because the last thing you need is to have liquid glue go on your windshield. It will fog it, and there's no going back. You can't uh, polish it and get it back crystal clear again. And the other thing is if you're holding it and you use liquid glue, the liquid glue could potentially go on your finger and then pool under there, so when you remove your hand, you've got a permanent glue fingerprint in there. So be very careful on how you use that glue. Some people use Elmer's white glue to hold the windows in, or a white glue kind of derivative. But the problem with white glue is it's not bonding to anything. It's uh, good on paper and that sort of thing, because the paper absorbs the glue a little bit, and the absorption of the uh, you know, white Elmer's glue between two pieces of paper forms the bond, whereas on plastic it can't absorb into anything. It just sits there, and it's very weak, so if you push on it, you could push your windshield right out. So I use the tester's liquid glue, or sometimes I use just a little bit of tube glue. You're going to put it on a card and then dish out the tube glue and then put it in the hole so it's not like a big direct contact on there. Anyway, that's uh, my advice for the glass. So looking at the glass, you got your front windshield 
and then you've got all your little side marker lights and headlights and all that stuff. It's hard to see where they are because you've got the barrels and then they're just right in there. And then up front we have the headlights, which you don't actually need to get glue around, which is nice because they are all... Remember those holes and the pin lines up through all the holes? So that's where you want to glue is right around in the hole area and not up on your lights. And the cool part about them making these headlights and molding them in place like this on this little bar is that on other model kits that are out there, you actually have the headlight as a separate piece and it glues into the bezel. And the bezel is a reflective cup thing at the back. Now what happens when they're separate like that is you have to align your headlights because they've got this crosshatch pattern on them and you want that to be north, south, east and west. And that is having your grill going like this, right? And if you get them crooked, your grill is going up, you know, at the wrong angle and you're having it something like north over there and uh, east and west this way and it's not correct this way so you always want to make sure they're north south east and west but because these ones in this kit are mounted on the bar Ravel has already done that for you so you don't need to worry about that extra little headache which is always quite nice so again there's our little lights as you can see they're very uh, tiny and um, you want to be able to hold on to them as you're clipping them out so they don't launch across the room and disappear forever and uh, unfortunately, none of these are painted with red or amber, so you're going to have to invest in some of that. Tamiya makes a really good red and amber paint, and Testers also has some, but it's a little on the metallic kind of side, but it does still look good. Next up, we have our wonderful black vinyl tires, and these are actually a rubber derivative, so there is a little bit of a squish and play to them which is very awesome. The only downside to these tires is there are no manufacturer names or makes of the tire on the side. So for example, no raised letters that say Goodyear, Firestone, or any of those other brands, Canadian tire brand even, <laughs> Motomaster. That would be neat. See some Canadian tires on here. But you can see that the tread pattern is really nice on the area where it's going to contact the road. And it also has this deep dish side tread pattern. And what this is for is when your Jeep gets stuck in the mud, if it goes down a little bit, you have this nice grip on the side walls of the mud. Because remember, you're starting to dig a little trench in there. So the idea of these is to help you get out of that little muddy trench. But yeah, like I said, if you look, they're completely smooth on the sides. So I wonder if there is actually a decal that goes on. We'll, we're going to have to find out on the decal sheet. But overall, these tires are really nice and look accurate to a modern tire. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, the great decal sheet reveal. And here it is. If we move our protective paper off of the decal sheet, you can see the wonderful decals. Now here we have the beach scene, and of course that's off of California, so you can do a little bit of Baywatch if you need. There's our lifeguard logos for the side of the Jeep, as well as the hood, the beach patrol, and our red crosses, as well as the medical symbols on the side. And we've got our great California license plate, 6RT J224. Now over on the, oh, actually on this side, we also have the lifeguard decal, which goes on to the windshield up at the top. We have two different colors of Rubicon and Jeep, so you can paint it either in a bright color like white or yellow and use the black lettering, or darker colors like deep red and blue and use the white lettering, which is really cool. There's our decals for the side marker lights, as well as a little chrome-plated Jeep logo. And this looks a little bit grayed out with some white touches on the top. And of course, that is for a little bit of a pseudo-reflective kind of look. We also have the Rubicon decal for across the windshield. Again, very nicely done. New Jersey AZH-103. And it even has a garden state down below. And in the California plate, it actually has a website, dmv.ca.gov. Really cool stuff. Really nicely done. Now that I got my reading glasses on, these look spectacular because they're in focus and I can see them. 
And uh, we got a copyright on here, 2019. So again, really, really cool stuff. Now's the time once again to say goodbye to Steve at the Model Car Minion. And thank you once again for checking out our Ravel 2003 and forward Jeep Wrangler Rubicon model kit. I hope that you will get one of these wherever you can find one. I'll try to bring some into our Monster Hobbies online web store, see what happens there. But if not, I got this one at Michael's, so it might be there for you. Anyway, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to it. And I hope it helped you to see what was in the box before you make a purchase, wherever you make that purchase. And until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.